Sony, you you really outdid yourself this time. Oh my god. So on May 24th, Sony went ahead and revealed or released their 2023 game showcase. Now usually, I'm not really the biggest fan of Sony's presentations or even Microsoft. I really just stick to Nintendo, that's it. But because recently I have become a PS5 owner, it's my first time owning the PlayStation system on my, on my own, I decided I might as well check out the showcase to at least see the offerings that Sony will have for the, for the rest of 2023 and beyond. And I gotta say, they really gave it some really good quality stuff because not only do we have you know some sequels to existing games and all that but we also got some new ip as well which is always nice to see and it really makes me interested in more franchises so i just want to go ahead and talk about some of my personal favorites and highlights from the showcase i'm not gonna talk about everything because we'd be here all day but just the things that i personally really really loved and doggone it there's a good amount of it so i just want to just jump into it and just talk about st stuff i loved so starting off for me was Helldivers 2. Now, I didn't really play or even hear of the first game, but this looks really, really interesting, giving me like a desolate multiplayer space monster hunter type vibe. I don't really know. Uh, but from the trailer, it looks really, really cool. The graphics look great. And having the multiplayer looks really fun too. Honestly, again, I probably should play the first game, but it looks really, really fun. I'm really excited to see this and maybe as more trailers come out, I'll probably end up playing it but now helldivers 2 looks really fun i really like it then we have immortals of evenum from ea and ascendant studios now this game looks really really cool because essentially from what from what i'm gathering it kind of looks like a bioshock type game where like you know most of your weapons or i guess the magic you're using is from your 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 fists and you battle like these monsters and these you know type demons looking things and it looks really really cool like, like the trailer looks so good it makes me feel like i'm actually watching like a really good magic movie i don't even know but the game looks really fun the, the effects look so good the colors and i can only imagine the amount of magic spells you can use with your fists and if you can maybe infuse that with weapons or whatnot i don't really know but like it really does give me a good lord of the rings type vibe and i'm really really excited to see more about this game it just looks so damn nice and as a fan of like you know by Bioshock Infinite. This looks so nice. I, I'm really actually very excited for this. Phantom Blade Zero. Okay. This looks really, really good. <laughs> I know it's gonna be a trend of this video, but oh my god, this looks really, really good. I'm a big fan of, you know, sword combat and, you know, type gritty type visuals, and this game looks really, really fun. Kind of giving me a Ghost of Tsushima type vibe with, uh, you know, its setting and its gameplay, and it looks really, really cool, especially that, you know, that fluent as hell sword combat. Oh my god, the moves they pulled off in this trailer look so damn cool, and I am, I'm so excited to see more of it, and like, ah, it looks so cool. It looks really cool, and I I don't know if it's set in like an ancient in, in ancient times if it's modern i don't really know i'm not gonna look too deep into it but it looks really really cool combat looks great the artistry looks great the visual style really is the first thing that comes to mind it looks really really fun so i'm super hyped for this and just like i might actually play this game it looks good phantom blade zero i like it next we have the plucky squire okay now this mainly again caught me from its art style alone going for a storybook type aesthetic and it looks so 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 cute, and I'm always on, on, on a search for new 2D, 3D type platformer games, and this definitely hits the book. Um, the art style is great, the gameplay looks really fun and creative, switching between, you know, the storybook world and, you know, a 3D type world. I'm very excited for this, and the fact that it's gonna, you know, not, not only come to PS5, but other systems is really fun, and it just looks really cute to me. I, I love it. Kind of gives me, kind of gives me, like, you know, the vibe of, like, either It Takes Two, or Unraveled, or even Sackboy's Big Adventure, stuff like that, so I'm really, really looking for fun little platforms like that and it looks really fun i really do really do dig now this is one i was not expecting but i'm 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 interested in and that being a full-on remake of metal gear solid 3 snake eater now i have barely any experience in the metal gear solid franchise all i really know is of snake is from smash brothers but i have played a few hours of metal gear solid 5 and i thought that game was fine wasn't really amazing but it was fine enough so hearing that they're remaking what people consider i want to say is one of the better ones is really 
really exciting and I really want I really want to jump into the MGS franchise for a long long time and this looks like a really good entry point N not only because you know it's snake and it's a nice remaster but like having a full-fledged remaster on the ps5 and not just like you know because I've, I've heard they've remastered games like some of these games on the PSP or whatever and all that all like that but having it on a full-fledged system like this is really really fun and I'm really excited to jump into it I do have a few reservations um, mostly because you know like do are these games answer me this it, are the games like like do they have a certain timeline you have to play one two before you play three you can you just jump into any really one of them without any problems and also the fact that over the past few years Konami has really kind of you know not really been the kindest to Kojima and the games he's directed over the um over those past years so I don't know how I feel about giving Konami that money but I mean, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm okay to support a nice Kojima production, so. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, looking, looking great, and I'm excited to see some fun new snaky action. Okay. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16. Okay, let me just say this, right? Not really the biggest Final Fantasy fan. I like RPGs like Xenoblade and stuff like that, but Final Fantasy never really been my big cup of tea. I've played a little bit of games, like, you know, I've played 6 and 7 and a bit of, and a bit of 15. 15 was pretty fun, was kind of fun, but 16, from the trailers I've seen with, like, you know, the combat and the story elements and all that and the characters, it looks really, really fun, and I really just, like, I want to jump into this game. It's a weird feel because I've never felt this hype for a Final Fantasy game, you know? Never really been that big in, you know, 14. I don't give a crack about 14 and like 7 I want to play the remake but just don't haven't really played the original so I, I, I'm a very in a weird spot but like 16 boy does it look so good oh my god let me just say it looks so damn good and uh, I don't know what else to say it's just oh Final Fantasy 16 looking real nice and I'm excited I want to jump into it and and, and understand the, the, the lore I'll probably just watch a video on it and it's like the lore of Final Fantasy <laughs> Assassin's Creed Mirage okay Okay. Over the past few years, I've grown an appreciation for the Assassin's Creed franchise, really starting off with, you know, with Black Flag, and moving on to the big games like Origins and Odyssey and all that, so I've really loved uh, the Assassin's Creed franchise going for this big, open-type world, and Mirage, I think, I don't know if it's going to, continuing in the big, open-world type um, aesthetic of the previous games, where it's going for, like, a mix, I'm not really too sure, but the gameplay looks so fun, it's going around all, you know, the buildings and going in different areas, I don't know if this takes place in, like, an ancient ancient Egypt or an ancient Rome or ancient whatever ancient modern time I don't know the gameplay looks really fun it looks like a really expansive game and I'm always open for a brand new Assassin's Creed game and it just looks so damn cool and, and it's great like I, I just I love open world games all the sandbox games and having that Assassin's Creed element in there really damn cool and uh, you know what I I'm gonna play it as a new as a baby Assassin's Creed fan I'll go for this I'll definitely go for some fun Assassin's Creed action because it definitely 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 has my interest here's one that i really wasn't expecting so we have dragon's dogma 2 which uh is a capcom game now i have not heard of the original game as first when the trailer started i thought that was gonna be a monster hunter game but this looks really really cool uh you know it really does give me that monster hunter vibe but you know judging from you know we have dragons we have you know this fun combat which i don't know if it's you know weapon based or magic based again my my um my knowledge is very very small on this but you know the trailer definitely got me hooked with this you know third person type you know hack and slash ish gameplay taking down these big creatures and whatnot so i'm really excited for this um Again, you know, I'm probably gonna need to see other trailers, maybe a, maybe a demo for me to actually be convinced. But you know, I'm typically Capcom does some really great stuff, and you know, you know, since like you know, the direction they've gone with Monster Hunter and all that stuff, I think I'm pretty convinced that this will be a very fun game for me to jump into, even if I haven't played the original one. So yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2 looking really really nice. I'm really excited to see um what this franchise has in hold. Maybe I'll become a nice little fan of it. Okay, this is a game I probably will not play, but just the fact that it exists is hilarious. So, we have Resident Evil 4, uh, for PlayStation VR 2. I mean, it's a good idea, granted. I mean, we had se uh, Resident Evil 7 on the original PSVR, and having another game on it makes sense. Uh, I don't know why they didn't go for 8, because 8 is the technically most current game in the timeline, but it makes sense that, you know, 4, the remaster of 4 came out quite recently, and that was a big hit, so a lot of people really liked it, so I get why 4 is there, and considering how in the, uh, you know, Resident Evil lexicon type thing, uh, 4 is generally considered to be one of the better ones, so 
know, that's really cool. And I think having, you know, Resident Evil, this action survival horror game in VR, sounds absolutely terrifying, and it makes me want to actually play it. I don't know if I'm going to actually own a VR. It might maybe, like, if someone has the game, I'll probably just, like, play it at their house or something. But overall, this looks really damn cool, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a semi-okay fan for, um, for VR games. So, yeah, Resident Evil 4 on VR, this looks... This looks like a fever dream. I'm kind of half excited that this actually exists, so yeah. Okay, I can't go further without talking about Project Q, which basically reads as its own remote play-based handheld device. It's a Nintendo Switch for the PlayStation 5. It's a great idea. Having your PlayStation games on the, on the go, that's fine. I guess we can agree that the PSP and PS Vita are now dead. Whatever. It's un unfortunate, but whatever. This is weird to me. This is very weird to me because, like, we have, we've had the Switch that's been out for several years, and that's been a big success for Nintendo. The Steam Deck for Steam, obviously, being one of the big ones. So, Project Q... I, I don't know, because, like, it's a good idea. I can see a lot of people really enjoying it playing games like Spider-Man and Final Fantasy and, you know, COD and whatever on the go. But because of the other systems in there, I feel like it will be overshadowed. And so, like, I feel like I feel like Sony's going to really have to push their main IP and what this system can do that others can't, obviously, can probably get run at a, better, at a better frame rate and consistency than the Switch. But I'm just hoping to see they'll do some more fun stuff with it. But as a general, um, you know, idea, it's not a bad idea. And I feel that at some point it would have need it would have needed to happen. So Project Q looks really really cool. It looks really fun. And of course, to round off this pr showcase, they gave us the very first trailer and gameplay for Spider-Man 2. Hands down, my most hyped game for the rest of the year. And let me just say, I was a huge fan of the 2018 game and Miles Morales. Those two games I think are some of the best superhero games, Spider-Man games, and pretty much games on the PlayStation in recent memory. So when we heard of the sequel coming out with, with Peter Parker and Miles Morales and the Venom symbiote, I was on board from the start and this trailer made my desire a lot more concrete because you get to see Peter Parker fighting with the symbiote suit with all the stretchiness and all the attacks which look really, really, really clean. Miles Morales having a you know, like a wingsuit to fly around when that's really cool too. Having Kraven the Hunter and the Lizard as confirmed villains for the game is really, really fun. Hoping we'll get other villains like Green Goblin or Sandman in there would really be cool as well. The game looks visually stunning. It sounds great with all the returning voice actors, and I am just so, so hyped for this game. Let me, like, even before I got PS5, Spider-Man was my hands down the game I wanted to play the most, and just seeing this game, this trailer now, oh my god, I, I'm so excited, and I'm really, it really does, you know, like, make my mind start fluttering with like what other things can I do to the game like how is this big is the story gonna be can we explore more areas of New York not only the city like but can we go explore like you know the raft super villain prison can we go across the Brooklyn Bridge to other parts of the city are we gonna have you know more suits and more gadgets to build up from other Spider-Man lore are we gonna have more DLC giving us more characters from the lore like so many things that make your head think we're gonna have more Spider-Man in the game probably not but you know what I can dream of having Spooderman or 2099 or Scarlet Spider or whatever in the game as their characters and not just the suits. You know, I'm just really hyped for this game. Spider-Man is just is the game that like, if, unless Nintendo comes out with something crazy like uh, like a Xenogears remaster or something like that, um, Hands On Spider-Man 2 is going to be my big game for 2023, for the rest of 2023 rather, and it just looks, looks so good, so clean. Oh my god, I cannot wait for this web slinging fun and... Uh, I cannot wait for this game to come out. So yeah, those were a few of the games that I really uh, had a grasp on or really spoke to me during the showcase. Of course, that's not everything. There were some games I probably didn't mention, but that was to me what I thought was really, really cool. And um, give me your thoughts too. You know, what were some games that you liked or didn't like or agree with me disagree on? Whatever it may be, I want to hear what you guys think. And if you guys enjoy this little style of video talking about games like this, um, let me know. I'll probably do more with other directs and stuff like that. But thank y'all for watching. And uh, Sony, you, you, I'm going to go buy some more games. I'm going to invest in your company. Thank you.